last day we ended our discussion on uh, k nearest neighbor algorithm today we will start with uh, another algorithm called decision tree so first of all what is decision tree you see in the name it's given it is tree so it's definitely a tree it's a you can say a binary tree which is used to classify a set of data in more detail if i can say it's something like this like it classifies a new data k or k's based on several decision made on the features of the data set so in the left hand side you can see a data set and as an example where you have some set of features like weather temperature humidity and so on and the target variable or you can say the output is the last one that is play i mean whether you want to want to play or not based on several weather conditions so you can see a tree structure over here sorry a tree structure over here where you can encounter here basically three type of nodes i will say one is the root node we all know that in a tree you will have a root node and there are some nodes which we can call decision nodes based on that we decide whether we will play or not so if i want to elaborate it a bit more we can say that there are three types of node have in a decision tree algorithm one is root node so it is a node present at the beginning of decision tree we all know that from this node the dividing started so and the decision node the node which gets after splitting the root node which is called decision node but you see it's not like decision taken only after the root node even the root node is also a table or you know a part of the decision node you can say we must take the decision starting from root node itself and at the end we have a leaf nodes where we will place different different uh you can say cases or data points with respect to their class something like class is either yes or no i want to play yes or not right so now see question is that how this decision tree actually work so let's try to understand with an example suppose we have a data point something like this you see this data point is very scattered and we have assumed two features x1 and x2 so each and every point is represented by two features and i have kept this particular pattern of data intentionally just to show you that where we have this decision boundary you can see clearly that the decision boundary present somewhere here right something like this so anyhow our goal will be to find this decision boundary at its best so that in future if a new data come based on under which boundary the point lies we can decide the data is in which class for example if a new data comes and the based on the value of x1 and x2 if the coordinate in this system is somewhere over here as you can see this red is a new point i don't know its class i want to classify it so based on the value of x1 and x2 of this particular red point i will place somewhere in this space and i can see it's here and since this decision boundary is within over here so you can say that yes that mean 
this new point should be within this particular class but you know it's an idea scenario that you can see here like what idea scenario mean it mean that in a particular boundary we have a particular class only there is no misclassification present in this particular division boundary but in real life it is not you know a very common situation you may have more than one uh, presence of uh, another class within the division boundary itself but in that case for example in real life there will be some points which will come from blue no, sorry green but in that case what we do we go for majority voting what is majority voting let's see uh, we will see what exactly majority voting is but let's proceed how this decision tree is created based on this particular data set so we will start with a very you know we, we don't have decision boundary just imagine in this way and we will start with very initial root node of the decision tree just for example i'm showing you a decision tree here for example let's take the decision is started with a decision x1 greater than x5 so this is a criteria you can put here as a root node and you see until and unless you are i mean what will be our intention our intention will be to split the whole data set into several leaf node in such a way that each and every leaf node will have one of the class either you know blue or the you know somewhere like uh, yellow one or something like that okay so now question is that if i want to build this decision tree we will have to start from some root node and definitely you must have some criteria over there in the root node right so just for example i have shown here that maybe the criteria can be say x1 greater than 5 so before I split, I have the full data set here. All the, you know, say I'm taking same amount of green and other points is present. Now, based on this particular criteria, if you see what will happen here, the criteria, according to the criteria, we must have a decision boundary like this, right? Which is representing a straight line, which represents X1 greater than 5. So whatever you know the points present in this space whose x1 value is greater than 5 that is this part and all the other data will be this side so if you split this one x1 greater than 5 I your answer will be either yes or no for some all the points right if I take yes or no so number of yes will be very few as you can see in the right hand side we have very few points which is only green uh, which whose value of x1 is greater than 5 <coughs> and in case of no <coughs> you have all the other classes including some part of the blue i mean some part of the green uh, class also exists so as you can see over here that some part of the green class present in this site and also some part of the present some part of the other you know all part of the other present uh, other class present here right so you see this particular yes part this site we can say that okay this is the optimal split we have in the right hand side in the right child you can say because because there is no scope or no need to split from this particular node because you have only one particular class present here you don't need to you know need any other criteria because there is no other class but in the left child you see we have a mix of two different classes so i have to split it more now assume that i have kept a criteria that x2 greater than 8 so that means with respect to this particular diagram our decision boundary should be somewhere here maybe 
just assume this particular decision boundary represents all the points which are, it divides actually the points with x to greater than 8. So remember when I am placing this decision boundary don't consider these points because these particular points already placed here. I am considering only this part of the code, this part of the space and here I am actually doing the uh, division. So x greater x2 greater than 8 will be satisfied by only these green points. These green points. Okay. So in the ES side, we will have some more green obviously and we will have some mixed of two different classes in the other part of the class you see you cannot say that this is the decision boundary based on which you can you know decide in which class you will have because in this side you still have a mixture of two different classes right so that means i have to split more on this in this part only. So what I have given, I have assumed that maybe the criteria can be something like yes, x1 less than minus 3. If I place this criteria, naturally we will have a decision boundary something like this. And you see in this whole side, whatever left, the this side is x1 less than minus 3. So the, in the yes side, we will have, I am sorry, which is x, uh, x1 less than minus 3 that means uh, this part so this part will be in one side which is greater than minus 3 that means minus 4 minus 5 that means all these green points will be x1 greater than i mean i mean uh, yes will be greater than minus 3 so it will be in a no side and you have something like this so as a result what we have seen by some set of decisions something like x1 greater than 5 x2 greater than 8 x1 greater than lesser than minus 3 something like that we have divided the whole data set into several parts so that whatever you know you know it's an it, i mean data present in the different different leaf nodes are only of a particular class it's not a mixture of two classes so you can say we can have a optimal split over here but the interesting point is that how you will determine that which will be what will be the criteria and what will be the optimal split for your tree because instead of x1 greater than 5 if i have some another criteria here or maybe if I change the variable instead of x1, if I change the variable to x2, maybe the entire tree will change. The tree formation will be entirely changed. In that case, the the you know the way uh, the points will be classified is entirely different than the present classification of the data. So question is that that mean with different different criteria and different different uh, variables we are using in different levels of the tree creates a different type of decision trees, right? So what actually happens, you know, in computer actually what it, what computer does, computer does not start with a particular value value and a particular criteria, rather computer algorithm checks various possibilities with respect to criteria and the variable and creates more than one decision tree and it chooses the best one which can divide the data set as an optimal speed so now questions come that how it is exactly doing like for example by the way, I mean, for example, I mean, just what I said written here that our model needs to learn which features to take and what will be the correct threshold values to get an optimal split. Why I am saying this? Because 
if you see this decision tree you will say that yeah it's look like a simple if else statement that if x1 greater than 5 then this side else come this side again if x2 greater than 8 so if you put you know some nested if else statement you can do this you know do this splitting but question is that how you will understand what is optimal split so there is, here is a part of learning that to 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 check which features to take for the decision and what will be the criteria uh, or you can say threshold for this optimal speed and that is the part of learning and that's why it's part of machine learning so let's move forward so to understand how the model decides this optimal speed even you see here i have kept two criteria two different situation here you see so for the same you know you know same set of points in one case i have considered x1 greater than 5 in the root node in one another case i have considered x1 greater than 2 in the leaf node because of the difference of these two criteria the whole data set will be divided differently in two different cases for example, as you can see, for x1 greater than 5, in the right hand side, we have only one class present and, you know, some mixed of mixed class present in the left side. But if I place, if I just shift the boundary little left because of this criteria x1 greater than 2, what we will see? We will see that there is no child of this particular root which can claim a particular class of data in its pocket. For example, what I'm trying to say is that you see, unlike this to this particular case, in this node, we have a mix of both class present in both side. Okay. So, in among these two, which one is better one? We have to decide and this is a very basic you know part of deciding what will be the op optimal split now to understand the mathematics what is running behind to decide which particular split is based we have to take a new concept what we call information gain okay so and this information gain we represent in a particular technical term called entropy so naturally question comes that what is entropy technically an entropy can be represented by this particular formula which is summation over minus pi multiplied by log of pi represent Remember, this PI means not I, I mean, you know, because of some mistake here in my side, this I should be actually the ith probability. What I mean to say is that what this PI represents the probability of the class I. So, if we have two different classes, so it will basically, entropy is basically add the multiplication of the probability of the classes multiplied by log of the probability okay so what is the you know you know uh, importance of this entropy remember this if this entropy is very high then we are very uncertain about determining class of a randomly picked point from the data set what does it mean it means that for example, if you divide the, divide based on some threshold or criteria, if you divide a whole data set into two part and in one side you have some mixed, mixed of uh, two different classes, this entropy will define that what is the uncertainty present in that particular state and that and, and, and this uncertainty is calculated by this particular formula. This formula is very simple. Remember, 
what is pi again i am saying it is probability of ith class so just assume a particular state where you have say 5 from class 1 and 10 from class 2 so as a whole there are total 15 points in the set in the state right among 15 points 5 are from class 1 10 points are from class 2 okay so what is the probability of taking if i pick a particular point from the bucket what will be the probability of taking a class 1 definitely the probability will be 5 by 15 right we all know that similarly what will be the probability of taking uh, a point from class 2 that will be 10 by 15 right that mean the entropy will be calculated by minus 5 by 15 multiplied by log of 5 by 15 this is for class 1 again minus 10 by 15 multiplied by log of 10 by 15 this is for class 2 and these two will be added because of this summation sign as you can see here the result that you will get will be the entropy remember one thing we are taking log here based on i mean the base of this particular log is 2 so let's do one thing let's take a example here for example let's take the example of the you know the the uh, root of the tree where we have the full data set okay so what will be the you know entropy for that you see if you pick if I, if I just assume for time being that the number of entries of these two classes are same, that means there is a probability of this particular green class will be the number of, uh, you know, number of green, you know, points here divided by total number of points. So, since I am assuming that the number of green and number of the other points is same, that's why it is basically half, probability will be half for both green and this, uh, some, uh, you know, I don't know the color name actually, maybe, you know, some other color actually here. So, in both cases, actually, it's the probability is half and obviously, the, it will be log of half and you see, since this minus is present, so you can keep this minus somewhere outside and just do the addition of pi into log pi and that is what i have done i've just kept, I've kept outside minus and put 0 0.5 into log 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 into log like this and both log is both both log is of base 2 if you calculate this you will see the entropy is 1 what does it mean it means it is extremely uncertain to get you know to determine which particular class will be if i pick up on pick up a particular point randomly it's extremely uncertain to you know to uh, determine okay just take an opposite scenario for example let's take a scenario okay by the way this is the probability of the state and let's take a opposite scenario i have only green class no other class is present as you have already seen in some decision tree that we have designed not designed actually we have just assumed in the different different leaf nodes as you can see right we have only one class so what will be the scenario definitely the scenario will entirely change in this case why because for this green class you know if i consider the other class the probability of the other class is zero because there was zero entries present so zero by you know of the full data set so it's zero and for the green point it is one because only this green point is present right so that means probability of taking the class two is zero probability of taking class one is one so zero multiplied by log zero minus it's not minus it should be plus actually because we have uh, we should we have uh, kept a bracket here so plus 1 into log 1 if you add this you will see this result becomes 0 what does it mean 
it means that there is no uncertain information present in this particular node. Yes, that is true. Because if you pick up any point randomly from this particular state, you are very certain that definitely it will be from class green. There is no scope of getting a data from another class. That is why there is no, you can say, uncertainty. Or in the sense, you can say there is no information present uh, you know entropy uh, that's why it's very low okay so now what will be our you know what will be our goal how to decide uh, that again the question comes that what will be the optimal split now let's go you know move forward and let's see how we can utilize the this particular entropy to decide what will be the optimal split so Again, we have came back to a point and we have assumed a scenario here, you see. Just assume like for x1 greater than 5, for this particular criteria, we have divided the full data set into these two part. And for this particular criteria x1 greater than 2, we have divided these two part. What is the difference? The difference is that in this first case, case 1, this particular right uh, child has entropy zero right this particular state has entropy zero and it has some entropy here so this entropy value you know i have just cal i'm not calculated actually i have assumed okay because some high entropy will be definitely there not may not be 0.95 maybe something 0 0.85 or 0 0.8 exactly exact value is not my you know intention to put here because I am interested to understand how we can use this entropy in future for understanding what will be the optimal speed, right? So just assume that we have this two entropy and similarly for this case 2, because of the criteria x1 greater than 2, since we will have a mix of both classes in both sides of the, of the tree, so that's why definitely there will be some, you know, some similarity in the entropy value also right so that's why i have assumed the entropy value may be 0.92 in the left in the left child and 0.94 in the right child a similar value almost so with the entropy value what we can do we can actually find try to find what is the information gain we are getting because of the split and how this is calculated information gain is calculated based on a, a formula again that is entropy of the parent sub parent um, node minus uh, equation which is summation over weight of the you know child and entropy of that particular child you know for example here this particular node has two childs so it's a summation of weight of first child into entropy of this i mean weight of left child into entropy of left child and weight plus weight of right child into entropy of right child as simple as that. okay now question is that what what is weight so here weight is actually a you know it's a you can say uh simply the ratio between the uh the total number of uh, data present in this state divided by the total number of data in the actual data set. For example, you can assume here in the right hand side I have only 3 points and if I assume I have total 20 points in this particular data set, whole data set, so 17 points come in the right, left side and only 3 points will come in the right hand side. Right. And that's why that means the weight of this particular state will be 17 by 20. 17 is this side by total number of data that is 20. Similarly, the weight of the right child will be 3 by 20. That I have written here, you see. And you see, here the entropy will come into play. So whatever entropy that you have calculated by the equation that we have just visited, that entropy value will be now used here. So, 
if you just solve this equation you will see the information gain for this particular speed will be 0 0.1925 or something like that similarly because of this particular criteria and we have two different in i mean some similar entropy value we have got and obviously we can get an information gain for this speed as well which is nothing but again the entropy of the parent mm, minus summation over the weight of the child multiplied by entropy of the child. So what is entropy of parent? Entropy of parent will be definitely 1. We have already seen that. Because it is highly uncertain. I mean, I mean highly uncertain. And again, minus its here, you know, I've just assumed that 12 entries are here. So it's a simple calculation here. And maybe it is and as a result, here you see the information gain become 0 0.072. So what particular, which one we will choose? We will always choose where information gain is high. We, you will always see that this information gain will be always high if we have a situation like this that means in one side we have already got an optimal speed for example in this side in those situation information gain become higher so we will choose the optimal speed based on this information gain now next question come that uh, you know you know is there any any easy method that we can apply here there is a little easier method here. We can have a, you know, uh, you can say a update, updation or modification of this uh, information gain or, or not information gain. I will say a modification of the uh, formula that we, that we are using for the calculation of uncertainty. We can use a special type of index which we call Gini index or some people say Gini index. What is Gini index? I mean, or Gini index? Gini index is actually another type of measure for the same purpose. For the same purpose means for this optim finding this optimal speed. Up to now, what we have done for finding the optimal speed, we have used entropy which is basically summation over minus probability of ith plus multiplied by log of probability of ith plus. The guinea index say that you don't need to go further, go for the complex operation like log. Because we know that log is a very complex operation which is which requires some hardware complexity. So just to minimize this hardware complexity, what we can do, we can use this Gini index which say that it is nothing but, you know, it's summation of only pi square. That means summation of probability squares of the classes. That is the Gini index. As you can see here. So everything will remain same. Okay. Whatever we have found entropy here, so entropy is no more will be used for this Gini index. Gini index, remember, I am telling you again, Gini index is nothing but another technique which is a simpler than previous one in terms of computational cost. Because we don't have any logarithmic operation here. Okay. So as you can see here, just what we have done in previous, here also we have done the same thing. We have calculated the Gini index of the left node. As well as we have calculated the Gini index of the right node. For this particular type of split. Similarly, same thing we have done for this split as well. So I'm not going line by line calculation because its calculation is very easy. It's not a you know, big issue, I hope. Right. So as a result, what we have got? You have got Gini index of left, left node is 0 0.46. This one. Gini index of right node is 0. Why 0? You know that. Because there is 
only one particular class so it's very less it should be it will be actually ideally zero yes but definitely for this x1 greater than 2 this particular splitting criteria since we have a mixture of both classes in both side that's why gini index will never zero both for left and right it will have some value and as a result what we will find we will find out first we have to find out what is the weighted gini index so what is weighted gini index weighted gini index is nothing but a combination of the gini index that we have found both from left and right node of a particular parent the same thing that we have done here you see the weight of i with entropy of child i a similar thing that is written here as well you see weight of i in gini of child i instead of entropy it is gini the rest of the concept is same so we can easily find out the weighted gini index for this particular optimal split as well as weighted gini index for this particular type of split you know not optimal split this split now again the base question will come what will be the information gain you see here we have ultimately we calculated information gain using the uh, formula of entropy of parent minus this since we are not using entropy with rather we are using gini index so here in information gain will be defined by gini index of the parent minus weighted gini index which is nothing but combination of the gini index of two childs and their weights similarly we can get a information gain for this split also so i hope this particular type you know the idea is very clear to you so as a result what we will get we will get information gain for this particular split as well as an information gain value for this split whoever is higher will be the definitely best you know split among them among them so let's just revise a little bit here so what we have seen we have seen that for a optimal split initially we have un understood that okay we have to go for entropy because entropy actually calculates the uncertainty present in that particular state if we randomly pick a point from the bucket and we have seen how our entropy is calculated how we are using this entropy we are utilizing this value i mean the, the entropy concept to find the information gain as a result so fine we have got information gain for both both threshold value or both type of split Who, whoever in whoever case the information gain is higher we will choose that particular split is better than the other one a similar strategy we are using here also instead of entropy we are using gini index the difference is only instead of we are actually avoiding the logarithmic logarithmic operation which is basically minimizing the computational overhead so as a result what we have seen we have seen it's like this just what i just mentioned here and we have seen that case 1 gives the better information gain therefore splitting criteria x1 is better but so remember just what i told you that you know we started with a particular criteria and then we are drawing a decision tree and that's the final it's not the case actually the model is comparing each and every possible split that take the one that i mean and take the one that maximizes this information gain so there are a lot of you know you can say not trial and error but i will say lot of different different criteria checking and 
you know efficiency of the fissure calculation is running behind creation of a diffusion tree the model traverses with every possible feature and feature values to search for the best feature and corresponding threshold and this is vital and this is a very important point but remember the approach that this decision tree actually use we call greedy approach what is greedy approach a greedy approach mean that you start from a uh, point from some source and you have some destination to go and you during this journey from source to destination you may have several you know different different path what this greedy algorithm does greedy algorithm chooses the optimal path based on the current criteria and it move further for example what i why i am saying this because in case of decision tree what happens that just assume a particular tree i mean the decision tree algorithm is checking all different combination of trees with different feature values their threshold values so among all the different sets take only one say started from x1 equal greater than 0.2 this criteria once this criteria will be fixed for a particular node based on that the next level of nodes will be created then based on some threshold present in the next level of nodes another next level of nodes will be created and then in this way decision tree will be made once a node is created there is no way to go back and change its threshold value so that is why it is called a greedy approach okay so like you can say that the following split depends on the current one okay that mean definitely there is no guarantee that you will have an optimal split and that's why actually lot of different different cases you have to consider i mean the decision tree algorithm has to consider that check that which particular case maximize the information gain okay so naturally there will be you know it there is a possibility of creating a very complex tree so and this very complex tree sometimes may creates a very you know over uh, you know uh, you know over trained data that's why in some sometimes you may need to stop the stop creating trees further so how to do that we have some you know some uh, Uh, parameters present in the decision tree algorithm what we can use that what should be the maximum depth of your tree what should be the minimum sample split size or maybe what should be the minimum samples minimum number of samples present in a leaf or maybe what are the maximum number of features we can place in a particular uh, decision node so these are actually some parameters by tuning these parameters you can control the quality of the decision tree and also you know the time to create a optimal decision tree okay so here the you know the basic concept of decision tree ends now let's do one thing let's you know as usual let's go to a python code and let's see how this decision tree is actually working using scikit-learn